Well, the U.S., the EU and Britain have announced new sanctions against Russia, but it is unclear how far these will go in de-escalating the crisis in Ukraine or how much pain they will cause Russia. Well, the West has never before attempted to cut Russia's $1.5 trillion economy out of global commerce. Well, Russia has also begun shifting trade flows towards China. Well, since Moscow annexed Crimea in 2014, China has emerged as its biggest export destination. Adding on to that, Russia is among the world's top exporters of oil, natural gas, wheat, copper and other important commodities. So global economies' dependence on Russia for these supplies cannot be discounted either. Now, for more on what's at risk if a military conflict takes place or if crippling sanctions are imposed, we're joined by Professor Shantanu Bhattacharya from the Ling, Li Kongqian School of Business at Singapore Management University. Well, Prof, the sanctions aim to cut, you know, a $1.5 trillion economy out of global commerce. How will an economy that size be pressured by those sanctions? Bearing in mind, Russia has already been shifting trade flows to China. So how painful at all will all these sanctions be? That's a very pertinent question. If I take a look at the amount of uh, trade that Russia does with China, it has been growing over the last few years. But even now... China gets most of its raw materials from Australia, not Russia. Russia exports about 35% of its total exports to Europe, only about 15% to China. So while China is a buffer, Russia still has a huge exposure to Europe. Russia accounts for about 40% of Europe's uh, gas, about 20%, 27% of Europe's oil. So if sanctions are imposed in terms of cutting off Russia's energy exports, which is about half its exports, it will hurt the Russian economy. To me, the bigger and more interesting question is, how will Europe make up for the shortfall in terms of energy if they are sanctioned not to use the exports by Russia? Because there is not that much excess capacity for energy in the world. So obviously that will mean that energy prices go up. If I take a look at the sanctions that the US imposed yesterday, they are primarily governmental, sovereign debt, then uh, on two banks that are owned by the government or quasi-government owned. To my mind, they are being very careful to hurt Russia's economy alone, not theirs. If they start taking a more blunt approach to sanctioning Russia, it will hurt the global economy as well. So there's the conundrum. It's hard to hurt Russia's economy significantly without hurting the global economy as well. Yeah, zooming in on the, on the points that you made, uh, the, the energy crisis. So how is this going to worsen the energy crisis? As you also mentioned, gas prices are already at record highs. Oil is inching closer to $100 a barrel. Uh, what could we see and how long could this last? So... If I take a look at uh, the current demand for global energy, it's rebounded very fast. If you remember, energy prices, oil prices went negative in the beginning of 2020 when the pandemic hit. Over the last two years, the demand for energy has rebounded quite significantly. There is not that much uh, slack in terms of global ca capacity for oil and for gas. So right now, the current uh, prognosis, OPEC is trying to get its partners to increase their production roughly by about 400,000 barrels per day every month. And a lot of the partners, Russia included, are not able to comply. Over the last five years, there has not been enough investments in uh, oil exploration and oil uh, removal technology. So we are pretty much close to capacity in terms of global oil uh, production. If the oil market is hit by sanctions on Russia, you could see oil prices climb very, very quickly. So I think that there definitely is that question in the mind of everybody. You already have inflation at a 30-year high. If in that scenario you add oil inflation, then things could get bad for the consumer across the world. 
Yeah, and you know, the impact on energy is not the only ramification because Russia and Ukraine, they account for nearly 30% of the global wheat export market. They're also big suppliers of metals and other commodities. Uh, so can we expect food inflation to rise further? And also, you know, on the topic of metal and commodities, how would this further complicate the global chip crisis? If I take a look at the price of wheat, indeed, the five-year moving average for the price of wheat is about $5 per bushel. The one-year average, last year the average was about $7 or now the average is about $8.50 a bushel. So inflation is hitting us pretty hard. Year on year, the price of wheat has gone up 20%. If I take a look at Russia's impact on the global supply chain for semiconductors, while it does not appear so obvious, Russia has a lot of metals like palladium, gases like neon, which are important in the semiconductor manufacturing process. Russia supplies about 35% uh, of the global palladium. Ukraine supplies something like 90% of the global demand for neon. So the semiconductor supply chain will definitely get impacted. Chips will get impacted. The thing is, this tension in the Russia-Ukraine context has been around for some time. So most global company CEOs will have looked at alternate sourcing measures. The only problem is that, you know, you need alternate sourcing measures to have ramped up the mining of these metals, rare earths, and so on. If the supply chains have not sort of increased in terms of the mining capacity, in that case, again, you will see supply getting constricted and prices going up in these sectors as well. Well, thanks for your insights, Professor Shantanu Bhattacharya there from the Singapore Management University.